Hello and welcome to the Big Bank Theory Podcast. My name's John. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Hello. You join us um, a very wintry night in Barrow. We've just got here. My phone's not been working all day. Um, it's five to seven. Not many people are here yet. But yeah, I players must be coming out any minute now. Surely. <laughs> oh, no, except that the game got called off with an hour to go after much checking by the referee and a moving forward of the kickoff, just half an hour. Yeah. And then a final postponement. I actually can't do this podcast. Sorry. I've just realised. Why is that? I just can't. Okay. Uh, no, I can't. Actually, no, I can't. <laughs> um, well, really, the joke No, I can't thing. do it. Sorry. Oh, no, all right. Um, well, let's move it forward a bit, shall we? Yeah. All right. Um, so the joke's on me because I put my £10 in the iFollow, didn't I? Oh, come on. How okay. many times? I told you, do it one minute before kickoff. I, well, like when they moved it forward half an hour, I thought, perfect. Well, I mean, yeah, I, so did I, but I'm still never going to give, um, you know, I okay. kind of, I do it like an eBay auction, you know, right at the last minute, even, you know, like, and pay. Yeah. 10 that's, seconds that's to go. good advice. Um, but alas, the game is not happening. So, uh, never mind, we'll talk about, we were planning on talking about that, dissecting that. And also dissecting the Bradford City game. Yeah. Uh, instead, we'll just talk about the Bantams. Is that... Sorry, just quickly on the Barrow one. Is that already a rescheduled? Yeah. So that's twice now they've had to... Yeah. Because of... And not, neither time was Corona. Both were bad pitch. Yeah. And they had covers on. Yeah. They've taken off. Obviously, I, I know it's cold. It's cold everywhere. It's cold here. I just cycled here. It's freezing. Yeah. But, come on. I don't know. I mean, especially this season. Could they not have thought, even last week when they saw, OK, we've got this coming in, Storm Darcy, the Beast from the East. What can we do to make sure we get this game? Oh, I, don't, don't, I don't know what it is. I'm not, a, I'm not a pitch man, you know, but there are people out there who are. There yeah. must be something you can do. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's important to get these games played. It's costing, I, 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 you know, I mean, it's, you just telling me before, like, that they have to pay, right? Yeah. They have to foot the bill. Apparently, Barrow. Have to we foot know the bill. that that's expensive. Every time you have to like hire a coach, you have to pay your hotels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's other things. It's just like, what are you doing? It, could you not have spent that money somehow? I don't know. He- get your hair dry or something. Or something. I mean, you got to wonder about the referee's state of mind as well. I know it's not Barrow's decision. It's not Barrow's decision. But the ref. I mean, yeah. Like, I know he's really trying. Obviously, that they're trying to get the match on. That's why it is. So ridiculous. It's on, it's off, it's on. But I don't know. Could you not have... It was clearly going to be a frozen pitch. That was obvious. It was one, the last one, it wasn't as cold as it is now. So if you couldn't play it last time, you, can't, you obviously can't play it this time. The other surprising factor, of course, is the... Um, why isn't it happening earlier? They moved it half an hour earlier. Yeah. Like... Why didn't they say from the beginning, well, let's make it 5 p.m.? Why can't you just do it in a sports hall five a side? <laughs> One of those massive green indoor balls. Sure. I'd have done it. Um, who would yeah. you have as your, who would be your Exeter City five a side team from the current squad? Oh, good, good question. Anderson? Yep. Um, Matt Jay? Definitely Matt Jay's first name on the team sheet for me, too. I think you'd have uh, new man Robbie Wilmot. He looks pretty jinky, doesn't he? I'd, I'd have. Um, I think I might have both. No, I definitely have Randell. Yeah. He's a wizard at five aside, definitely, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. Um, and you probably have Archie and Collins. And Archie Collins, yeah. He wouldn't, <laughs> leave, he wouldn't leave the edge of his keeper's D. Would he, he wouldn't need a defender. You'd just have him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause and then all the rest of attackers. No I would mean, I have, have Jay, Randall, Randell, Collins. Yeah. Yeah, that's Yo- good. Jockle. That's good. Uh, alas... The EFL rules don't permit it, so um, yeah. No but come on, side. go and for it. No game. They're on their way <laughs> I back. Too, I right wouldn't now. have Bowman. I think he wouldn't be in my five tie team. Bowman, yeah. Parks, <laughs> uh, McCardle. Um, although he might not be in a position to be playing much five side anyway at the minute, um, and uh, probably most of the others. Um, of course, last week we didn't talk about it because the news w- hadn't yet reached us about Rory McArdle's pretty horrific injury. Yeah, I'm glad he, uh, to hear that he's actually, it's not as bad as they thought, which is, otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know if, I, we'd, we'd report on it because that's what we've been asked to do. <laughs> but, um... A gash to his private part. Yeah, we don't, we don't know which Element. part of the private part. Yeah. But we know it was, it was a gash and we, and, um, you know, 
No one likes to hear that. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often in football. You know, no maybe they keep it to themselves. Stubs, studs on there. You know, like yeah, different kind of tackle. Anyway, you know when you're a kid and you sort of watch, you see uh, some skateboarding video and there's like the kind of bail section at the end and there's all these people and it's like when everyone falls off. And for me, it was like I never want to go skateboarding again when I was watching <laughs> this. It would make me think that if I was one of those players and that happened to Mercado, I'd just be like crossing my legs and thinking, oh, forget it, I'll retrain. Yeah, yeah, indeed, retrain as a golfer. Um, anyway, that happened, but... Um, golf club in the private parts ain't much fun, I've always thought. <laughs> that shouldn't be happening often in a game of golf. <laughs> Something's gone badly Less wrong. Less risk, yeah. Something's <laughs> gone badly wrong. Um, so, uh, Barrow didn't happen tonight, but uh, Saturday afternoon at St. James Park, City took on Bradford City. Yep. Formerly of the Premier League. And, uh, Benito Carbone. Yeah, we Commentator beat reminded me of that. Um, and, um, yeah. So that was... We beat him. We beat him. Absolutely boshed him. Well, we didn't, but it was a good game. And we showed our superiority, I'd say. It was, uh, it was a watch, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I felt like I got my tennis worth. Uh, yeah. Just I'm for like the kind of range tonight. of emotions. <laughs> Who do I speak to about the tenner getting back? No one. It's impossible to get your ten pound back. No, you, you, I mean, you can still watch the game next time. Whenever it's played, Whenever it's wherever played. it's played, you can, I mean, you know, you learn your lesson. Yeah, I wish I had. Yeah. Um, I did learn my lesson about Bradford City because I didn't even pay till the game had started. Right. Because I was running late. Um, but it was pretty action-packed, wasn't it? It, it was. Um, so, well, it started... Um, we were doing quite well, weren't we? Yeah. And then... Robbie Walmart started. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Starting. Um, what other features were there? It was, it was a strong, it was a strong lineup actually. Starting lineup. I thought I, I was, um, I was pleased with that. Joel Randall's back on the bench as yeah. well, and um, you know, it was, it was encouraging. And we did, and we started the game really brightly, mm-hmm. much better um, intent. Yep. And we really looked like we were going to get you know, near to maybe having a shot. <laughs> um, and then we did have a shot. Jake Taylor had a shot. It blocked. Bounced out. Bradford ran down the other end and scored. Yes. It wasn't particularly good defending uh, by all involved. Um, I don't think we can blame Anderson. No. No, no. Um, I don't think there's much more he could do. I mean, it's hard to you know, pin it on any of them, really. And Well, I think we can pin it on all of them and be happy. Yes. Yeah, I think that's what you do, yeah. <laughs> but then they all redeemed themselves to a certain extent. All, I think all four defenders after that were involved in, apart from um, Lewis Page, unfortunately, subbed off another injury. Yeah. Um, all three of the remaining ones, Parks, Sweeney and Sparks, all involved in Exeter City goals after that. So, you know, bad, you know, bad at the back. Well, that is what they're supposed to be doing, defending, isn't it? Not, not scoring, but anyway, 1-0 down. 1-0 down. And it was early as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was early. Um, but you're right, we'd had enough momentum beforehand that it felt particularly disappointing. Yeah, they'd hardly been in our half. No. Anyway, thankfully we equalised uh, from a corner. Yeah. Pretty poor defending, but... I mean, it, you know. it's one of the sort of... It looked like a corner we'd concede, you know. Yeah, really. Sweeney's kind of marked... Um, at the back post, pretty much. Well, actually, kind of in the middle of the penalty area, and um, he's marked, but his the guy marking him just doesn't do anything. Doesn't jump. Sweeney doesn't even jump. Just headers it in. Very nice from standing. Yeah, <laughs> great, brilliant. But, you know, like one one. It We're did back feel in like I say this, Dan. It did feel like crossing was done with more intent. I think so. Yeah, and um. So there was less dilly dallying, and there was also, I think it felt like it had improved. Well, there was a couple early on for Robbie Wilmot. Well, ugh, ugh, Robbie Wilmot wasn't there. It's quite hard to say. Isn't Gary it? Wilmot. Yeah. Danced his way down the wing. Yeah. And uh, swung in a couple of crosses <laughs> early, <laughs> early on. And um, it was looking, that was really encouraging straight away. You're like, okay, good. This is the sort of player we thought he was. Um, so that, it looked like uh, a good touch and a good cross into the box. But yeah. And then disaster. So I, th- I think Sweeney's equaliser was just before half time, about 42, 43 minutes. And then uh, I thought, uh, you know, good, good place to be just before half time. Uh, and then Jack Sparks did not cover himself in the glory. No. 
It was. I mean, you know, he's a young player. He'll learn. He's he wasn't. He wasn't a defender before this season as well. He's been asked to become a defender. We've got to give him. And I'm not suggesting anyone isn't. No one's saying sack him. Um, but we have to realise that these kind of mistakes from these young players are going to happen, especially if you, you know, have to rely on them. So, I mean, when it's Sweeney or Parks or one of some of the kind of more experienced players, then you're a little bit more like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, I think, but with the younger players, you've got to give them a bit more um, chance. You've got to give them a chance to, to mess up. But he shouldn't be dummying it in his own penalty area. And hopefully he'll learn that. <laughs> so he just lets it run, thinking, oh, I can just dummy it and then let it run through to Jockle and um, you don't get near enough to him and the attacker sneaks in behind and um, yeah makes him look a twat I think um, Jack you know like don't dummy it ever on the edge of your box particularly not when it's not even going in the right direction for your goalkeeper but there we are lesson learned so we go in 2-1 down very disappointing I mean yeah that is a it's a it blow, isn't it? When you're watching, very deflating. Was deflating. That, that term gets chucked around, but I felt very deflated. I think that's fair enough. So that's half time. Then what happens? Um, they go into the changing room and separate <laughs> changing room, <laughs> and they have a little way. chat, and then um, they come back out and okay. they play the second half. And then they play. They shoot the other way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. So what does happen? So, so uh, well, it's uh, Bowman goal, isn't it? A nice one. Yeah. What? What, how, what minutes that on? I'm like sixty-one. So many. So it, it, we start really well again. Second half, don't yeah. we? I think. Yeah, we um, so we're two on. Be- we're two on down. But we were playing well. And we like, were something like sixty-eight percent possession. Yeah. So you're thinking, okay, right, like Taylor's got him in there, and he's apart from the. the so it's like a, it's a counter-attacking goal we've conceded, and and a silly mistake. So that's all you got to say, really. So like, just keep at it. We're still in this. There was a two mistakes that just like keep the focus. We'll get the goals, and and you know we did, and and um, it was a nice one, wasn't it? It was a hell of a ball from Jack Sparks. Like I said, redeeming himself. Yeah. To find Gary Wilmot yeah. out on the wing. Again. You got to stop calling that. I'm, str- I'm, I'm just I'm calling it him. hard enough to remember his Sorry, name. I'm anyway. calling him. I'm calling him that. Anyway. I'm just gonna. So he finds him. Yeah, Wilmot. Uh, he finds Gary, and then lovely ball in Bowman. In the right right place. Bosh. Arriving in the box. Headers it in. Bowman will give a little um, bit of credit to as well. Like played really well, mm. um, holding up the ball, just like you know, being in the right place, being a kind of focal point for the attacks, and letting bringing the, the other attackers into play and 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 helping form all those kind of like oppo- like chances that we had. You know. Yeah, I want to give Bowman a lot of credit because Matt Taylor's now revealed it was all true that Burton and Cheltenham were in for him. Uh, they wanted him. Yeah. They, they, City hadn't accepted the offer, but the suggestion is the offer was enough. Uh, and they were wondering if it was going to be possible. So the, mon- the money was obviously good enough to lose him for the second half of the season, given that his contract runs out in the summer. Matt Taylor, inevitably, I mean, very sensible, looked around, saw if there was anyone they could get that would do as good a job, uh, you know, for the money that we have. And uh, he's, no looking, one he's looking around, he's uh, Nicky and Josie he's, uh, jumping up, waving uh, his uh, arms. And it's like... No, sorry, mate. You can't even play on the five-a-side pitch. Didn't make the cut. Yeah, he's not even in the five-a-side team. Look, if we have to play... I do what, I might have a Jose in my five-a-side team. Would you? Yeah, maybe. It's a bold move out of five players. Oh, be, he's on the bench. All right. Um, so, so, anyway, Bowman could have gone for what we can assume is at least a good money move, given that City have been offered enough money to make it worthwhile for Yeah, them. yeah. So, he's going to be... He'll be on more... That's... Whatever the case, that's more money than he's probably ever made in his career, these you know, that that move. When you look at his transfers, he's Isn't bounced around the lower leagues. I know we got him from Motherwell, but I don't think Motherwell paid much, if anything, for him. Um, yeah, I don't know how much he's getting paid there. You, I imagine Burton or whoever will be paying him more than he's been paid anywhere else. Yeah. You know? And, and, and but what, so what happened then? So he turned it down? Is it no, no, of... so City turned it down. So City said, oh, right. we're not going to sell. And this is what Matt Taylor said in his interview. Um, because we can't get anyone. And then Bowman, massive credit to him, had a good game at, um, oh, where I forget where, Stevenage, and then had a really good game Saturday against Bradford. You know, he, he could absolutely feel downhearted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and, you know, know hats off true. to him, hats off to uh, him. I think that probably, uh, su- uh, probably suggests he is going to go in the summer, doesn't it? I can't, I mean, that means people are interested. If League One teams are interested, I mean, 
you can't stand in people's way, can you? But if he carries on getting goals, and he's already got one more since Burton wanted him, basically straight away. Yeah. So he'll probably be gone in the summer, won't he? Yeah. Um, and we won't get any money for him, which is a shame. Um, that is a shame, but we need him this season. Though. I, mean, I think, I mean, you know, if there's, I, I believe that there's no one else out there that we could have just picked up. At, of at, course not. I, I mean, at about 20 to 11 as well on transfer deadline yeah. day. Yeah. You might go and get some young lad who may turn out to be good, but it's a massive, massive risk. So yeah. fair play to Matt Taylor and fair play to Ryan Bowman. And if he gets us promoted this year, you'd think that that's, you know, brilliant effort by him. And he, des- he deserves a... Because it'll be his final move, really, won't it? He's 20, 29, 30. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're probably so right. That'll be his last move. And he's not, you know, he's... I mean, especially if it's somewhere like... He's not Jamie Vardy, is he? And also, he's not from this neck of the woods, no. is he? No, no. Although I think his wife is. I think his wife's in Torquay. Right, okay. He's from so. Carlisle, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, there you go. So, so Bowman had a really good game. That puts us equal to all. Yeah. Um, and then he does it again. Well, who, was, who played the ball up to him? I think that was a... What, for, the, for, for the penalty? For the penalty. So the winning goal was a pen. Yeah. Um, I think it was a big boot from Parks. Right. But it might have been Hartridge, so, who's on by this point, I think. It's somebody. And it looks like... Just, a big, just a big hoof over yeah. the top, basically. Bowman's not getting to that. Yeah. And then he appears yeah. and gets hacked down. He gets the foot to it, gets there before the, it's him and the keeper. It's a 50 50. Bowman nicks the ball past him and the keeper takes him out. You know, it's a. That no, was great. It's a yellow card for the keeper and a penalty. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, here we go then. And then up steps the littlest samurai. Um, the man with the, the atomic house. The atomic ant, Mr. Grey Interiors himself. Matt Jay. Which we'll come on to shortly. Matt Jay, so that was, that was with 10 minutes to go, 79. And so, obviously, Matt Jay's a bit of a... He's a bit of a, you know... How, by the way, how do you say this? You know there's the game that's like football, that you play with a hard ball, that's... F-U-T ball? How do you say that? Football? What are you talking about? That other game. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about. So in, like, South America... Futsal. Uh, futsal. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Futsal. The little, it, the smaller ball, yeah. Smaller yeah, ball, yeah. harder like, ball, yeah. Like cool, skillful, five-a-side. Yeah, yeah. FIFA Street. So that's Matt J, isn't it? FIFA Street, Matt J. Yeah, that's why you put him straight in your five a side. Yeah, 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 totally. He's FIFA Street. He's FIFA Street all yeah. over. He's been playing Futsal, that since yeah. 10. Against Ollie Watkins. And Matt J would try and do some, like, triple turn, triple Cruyff turn. And Watkins would just take it off him and score it from 80 yards, whatever. You know, that's how, that's how their childhood went. Anyway... Matt Jay takes a penalty in the futsal, in the FIFA Street school of thinking. Well, I think he's going for the kind of... Um, <laughs> I, don't know what he was going I for. think I think he's done it before. I think what he's going for is the kind of like, you get the keeper to dive and then you roll it down the middle. Yeah. Which is, I always think is risky. Especially and this was a, risky. On a sticky pitch. Because it rolled in so slowly. <laughs> it reminded me of sort of like when you're playing... Oh, this is a reference for the teenagers... Uh, down Doris Warren, the old shove halfpenny, or whatever you call it, you know. Yeah. Put the penny in. Yeah. And it dribble it drops down onto the tray, mm. and then you're like, "Oh, is it going to knock them off the little shelf?" And then it just just about does. It's like falls off the edge, you know. That's how it felt like. I tell you what it felt like to me. My wife inherited her grandpa's car when she was 17. It was a Vauxhall Nova, right? Oh yeah, they were all the rage. They were all the rage. First time yeah. we took it out, uh, we took it up Fourth Street. Uh, to get an Indian takeaway for the family. Uh, she parked it facing up the hill. Couldn't start it again, right? So me, I had to push it to get it going, push it up four street <laughs> <laughs> to get her to turn outside Bill Greenall's. These are all the 90s references for your kids, uh, which she managed to do. And then we rolled it down four street and it started Bill up. Bill Greenall's. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who remembers that? It was a music shop that you were sort of like... You weren't really allowed in. You went in and got bollocked. Yeah, for looking. Um, but it's sort of like you could buy a French horn in there. Yeah, and also someone was having a violin lesson in the shop. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was queuing up to buy a French horn, and and um, no, so I pushed it at that kind of pace to get it up four street. That's the kind of speed Matt Jay's penalty kick seemed right. to go at. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, box one over up four street, pushed. Yeah. Anyway, he scored. Who cares? Yeah, went in, and the crowd. At home, watching on their tablets went wild. <laughs> they did. You could almost hear your neighbour through the I wall. I hate you. In fact, I could. This is my neighbour s- can often hear each other through the wall. Because we. Are, this is the problem with iFollow, isn't it? It's all at different paces. 
Right. And do you get this? I you get can this. hear him through, so you can hear your neighbour. Is they listening to it as well? Yeah, yeah. So we're both listening to it. Oh no way! So you're getting spoilers through the well, through I the wall. I think she's getting spoilers off me because our internet is better. But also, does your iFollow text you when a goal goes in? No. Mine does. And on uh, on Saturday, my text was ahead of the game, so I'd look at my phone. <laughs> right. And it'd be like. City. These are modern football problems, aren't really they? The, the, and you always get the thing of like sometimes you're watching a, a stream of football. Uh, you know, I'm not suggesting illegally, but sometimes you watch, and then you go to check check on another score, yep. and you see that a goal's gone in in the game you're watching that hasn't actually happened yet. Now I've been yeah. so indoctrinated by this sort of thing that occasionally when I'm at the exit matches, I go to check the scores on another thing, and I'm sort of like, oh no, better not in case there's been a goal in this one. And I'm like, no, I, no this is real life. <laughs> Ah, uh, the pains of being a 21st century person. Yeah, I don't want any of it. Get get rid of all of it. Anyway, Steph's next door. So I think, she, I think she's got the radio on and I've got the internet on. And right. the radio is obviously quicker than the internet. So occasionally I hear her, but then something else was going on and she had it on her phone. And obviously you can pause it on your phone, can't you? And then I was early, so... Right, yeah, of course. Modern yeah, problems. I don't anyway. get that from my neighbours. I do can hear them through the bathroom. My house obviously backs onto, or you know, sides on next along is uh, uh, some students, um, and they're sort of very nerdy students. And yeah. in my bathroom, you can hear one of them sort of online gaming. Oh yeah, very very enthusiastically, really shouts that is like into his headset, whatever game he's playing. Do you know what I mean like like is it like a fighting game? I don't know, all sorts, and you can okay. hear him all the time, like. Like, but which doesn't bother me. But when my housemate's trying to have like a relaxing bath, <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, shouting about spells and you know yeah. arrows and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so so we, anyway, we won we three won. two. That was off topic. Three two, uh, and it was a really good win actually, wasn't it? The kind of win. We yeah, really so that's two needed. wins in a row. Two wins in a row. And, I didn't, and it's quite good to be like, yeah, you, that we did need it, and it didn't feel like we'd won two games in a row. Do you know what I mean? Because they'd both been a bit like. You know, yeah, it hardly been our early season form, had it? You know, a couple no. of like real bad, like I said, deflating goals. We were behind twice in this one, but yeah, brilliant result. And um, yeah, shame about Lewis Page injured again. Uh, I think any time there's at all a concern about him, we just pull him off. Yeah. So I think that's all we should really. We shouldn't. I don't. I haven't heard anything, but I don't think we should. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we don't have to worry too much that he's. But um, it's a shame for him because I think he's just... Like, every time I see him play, I just think he's so... He's such a good player. Mm. And you can really tell that he's... Um, that he wouldn't be with us down here in League Two if, if he hadn't had these injuries. When he obviously, he was playing at Charlton, wasn't he? And mm -hmm. doing pretty well. And it's a shame for him. I hope he's all right and we can get a bit more out of him this season. You yeah. Know? yeah, absolutely. He'd be up there with Jaden Stockley now, who's at Charlton Athletic. Is he? Yeah. Gone there, is he? Yeah. Um, I tell you who else looks good is um, forgotten his name again. Robbie Wilmot. Yeah, I think he looks. I think he looks like an excellent purchase. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Alone. He's alone. He's alone. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a little bit of different. It's a bit different to um, Williams and Randall. Williams and Randall, isn't it? He's a bit more of a kind of like. He's got I'm going to cross it in. Him, he? Do you want? Know he looks a bit more like a. I mean, and it looks a bit more like a bit more like Jake Caprice, but with better crossing. Yeah. You know, whereas he's not cutting inside necessarily. Um, he's just going to whip it in and he's just got a really good cross on it. Yeah. Him. And it's been a while since, I mean, Jack Sparks aside, who's, who can cross it really well, but also is, has have games where he's well off the boil. Maybe that'd be the case with Gary Wilmot. I don't, well, I don't know. But he certainly looked like his crossing was like decent, you know? And yeah. um, I'm, I'm, pleased with, I'm pleased with that with that for this season. I think he'll do well for us. But also Joel Randall came on. So he's... Yeah, at least back in the in in the mix, which is great. And, oh and yeah, s and that it reminded me actually how good he was when he was on the ball a few times towards the end. He didn't get long, but so um, I don't know where we are at, at the moment, but because that was an early game, that put us up to third, didn't it, in the league? I think we've I think we landed in fifth, but whether we're still there, I mean, there's games going on right there's now, games on right so, now, so we don't want to predict it. But what it did do is reminded us that actually we're totally in the as it stands, we are sixth. Okay. What he reminded us, we're totally in the promotion push, which I think I'd, I mean, obviously the internet's a terrible, terrible place where I also, where my hopes go to die as much as anyone else's. But everyone was like, well, that's that then. Someone even suggested a relegation fight at huh. one point. And I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. 
But no, no, actually, we've got a very good chance here of promotion. No one's uh, being very consistent here. No one at all. No, they're not. They're really not. And so if that's our patch of inconsistency out of the way for a while, then uh, we've got every chance of pushing on, haven't we? Reminding people that we're a good team. Um, definitely. And doing something about it. Definitely. There's still things to, to learn from both those last two games, especially, you know, like, like I was saying, there's two big mistakes that cost us. Two goals we gave away from that didn't need to be conceded. Um, and that will probably continue. But we, as long as we can, I don't know. We're definitely still in with the shout, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not sure about the, you know, automatics, but then it's just because that's just history sort of making me feel like that. And also there's the the backing up of the fixtures. Like, it didn't do us any good having those games in hand, did it? Now, I know other people have got games in hand too. And it's not, I don't think there's any kind of science to it where it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, inherently. I think it's just, but I think maybe, I think to be honest, you're better off just playing the games when you and they're supposed to be played. I don't think it necessarily, because you kind of think, you start second guessing it, don't you? Don't I mean, going like, oh, I think we'll be there because you think, oh, we'll beat them. Or we'll, but we, you know, it doesn't work like that in League Two. No. Quite often you win the ones you're not, you don't think you're going to win. You lose the ones you think you are going to be easy. So, Indeed. Um, so, well, obviously we've lost another game tonight, but uh, we'll talk about the next two games in a second. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be thinking about the next few games coming up. Um, this Saturday, Boundary Park, home of Oldham Athletic, another Premier League but not, I wouldn't call them a fallen giant, but they were in the Premier League once. Um, yeah, they were. Yeah. Anyway, Oldham, Harry Kewell's Oldham. Yep. Uh, who Kewell. we've seen a number of times now, haven't we? Oh, he seems to be. Like, he's just. He's going to be a league ticking two them manager, off, isn't he? Isn't he? The League Two clubs. Um, they're doing all right, Oldham. They're in thirteenth or so at the minute. Obviously, everything can change at the moment, but they're about eight points behind us. Um, we'd hope, wouldn't we, to to go there and get a result? They bought a load of players or something, have they? Bought a few players. They've got. I mean, he's got connections, I suppose. So there's been a few loanees. Uh, I'd. I'd hope that in our newfound rich vein of form, we'd go there and get some in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if with. We the, want, I mean, we've had the travel without the game, which is annoying. But uh, you know, we haven't played. If we want to. Yeah, it's one of the games you have to be. Have to be getting a, at least a good result, don't you? At least a draw. Yeah, I think. I think a draw would be great. I, th- I think a win would be wonderful. Boundary Park. That's a nice name. Yeah. Do you think it's on the boundary of Boulder? Uh, Boulder? <laughs> the boundary of Oldham? I um, do. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if you know. It's just anything that's not called, you know. Oh, some dreadful ones. Isn't pets it? Fact, at Home Arena or whatever. What was Barrow yeah. that we were supposed to be at tonight? Oh, something. Something, something embarrassing. Ridiculous, I can't remember. Um, yeah, so, so that's Oldham, Saturday. Uh, and then Tuesday, I mean... Don't count your chickens, Dan. Definitely don't put your eye follow money down. I wasn't going to. Good. Because it's <laughs> Rodney up, to, parade. up to Rodney's parade, uh, where he is. Lording it up, Rodney. Strolling yeah. around. It's not going to... I mean, that, we might as well cancel that one now. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably tempting, isn't it? Um, so that's another res- reschedule, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That was already supposed, supposed to... New Year's Day, That's it? supposed to have happened happen? already, yeah. Um, uh, no, nah, maybe it'll get. Maybe they'll get it on. Maybe this kind of a uh, cold snap will have um, moved on by then. Um, we don't know, do we? If um, Robbie Wilmot can play, obviously he's on loan from Newport, so it's quite likely he won't be allowed to play. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that. I mean, that, that, that's very much the thing, isn't it? That you're not allowed to play against your parent club. Yeah. Um, whether that's a thing in League Two, I don't know. No, I don't know either. Um, they've got Scott Bennett, of course. Although he got sent off at the weekend, so he might not be playing. But um, he shouldn't be allowed to play against us. Uh, well, we sold him, so it's different, I think. Um, Nicky Maynard's there now, isn't he? So Nicky Maynard, yeah. Heir to the wine gums. Millions. He's scoring. I'm not worried about him. Um, I think Newport's always a tricky place to go, mainly because of how dreadful it is. I don't mean the city, although, you know, call a spade a spade. But, yeah, if the um, cap fits. Unfortunately, that spade's also been used to dig up most of the pitch. Um, yeah. They literally let rugby players on there directly before football happens and then they wonder why maybe it's not the uh, silky surface they expect it to be I mean when there's no one allowed to go and watch it anyway you have got a question why they're sharing it with a rugby team Mm. because you can do one or the other 
somewhere else. Can't yeah, you? Yeah. You can do it at any field that has decent drainage. You know, you don't need the, you don't need the ground. We haven't seen this at all, have we? Yeah, um, and why? You know, it doesn't make any. Like, I'm not suggesting that you go and literally do it in in a, in an indoor sports centre five aside, but you could either the I don't know what Newport rugby team like. Do they have to play there? I think it's their ground. So is it the question? Would oh be no, why it is. You know, I've been there and they got rugby shirts all over the little clubhouse. So what the question would be: Why aren't Newport County uh, using yeah. the training pitch? You, you know, like you'd think it would be a legitimate thing to do at this time of the you know, in this season and at this time of year when there's no fans. When there's no, I mean, any other time you can't do it because you you can't. You need the money from the fans, but why not? City, of course. Um, I mean, because they still maybe they can't film iPhone from there, but can someone just stream it on their well, I mean, iPhone? It's only a one camera operation, isn't it? You could set something up. Anyway, um, you'll notice, Dan, that City have played 26 games. Um, now, some teams are above us. Uh, Cambridge have played 28. But there are some teams who are really struggling to keep up. Carlisle, in particular, only played 23. So they're five behind some teams. And it's only going to get worse, isn't it? Um, and you just feel like... That could be really a big... Not, I don't think it's going to be a problem for us, but it's going to be really a massive problem for some of these teams. They're going yeah. to play in three times a week. I mean, the only thing I can think is you just extend the season. Are they going to have to extend the season I a mean, bit? I, there's all these reasons, the same as last time, why they're, they're going to be unwilling to extend the season, aren't they? All to do with... I mean, again, it's the stupid things. They're not thinking about the bigger picture, are they? They're like, um, well, it, you know, Wembley's booked. And you're like could we play it somewhere else and they're like no no it has to be at Wembley and that's when you get these stupid problems um, right yeah I mean what about just uh, I can't imagine there's too many League 2 players having to play in the Euros is there but I if think that even happens I think it's because Wembley's being used for the Euros um, oh who cares I mean they closed Wembley altogether for about five years when they rebuilt it I just they managed then I agree entirely I just think we'll find these problems I think we'll be hearing in when fact, everyone's uh, waiting for Carl uh, they're better season. off not playing at Wembley anyway it's awful yeah Terrible when, stadium. I mean, as we know, as we all want, let's say, let's say it is City against Carlisle in the final of the playoffs, right? Totally plausible outcome. Uh, uh, inevitable. <laughs> probably inevitable. Um, Carlisle, very northern. Exit City, very southwestern. Aston Villa, very nice ground. Absolutely halfway in between the two. No, no. London. <laughs> London. For that one. That's what no, they're saying. Got, got to play that one in London. I mean, literally, Carlisle will take 20,000 and we'll take 20,000. And you well, I don't know if we will. Well, right. People are you know, somewhere between sick of it. Even I'm sick of it. <laughs> Let's say that we... I mean, probably it'll all be, you know, you have to sit two seats apart anyway. It wouldn't be a problem. Won't be a problem. <laughs> if they do do it, Wembley. We're, we're, these will be the problems that we come up against. Yeah, I know. They just, do, no just do it at Villa Park. Lateral thinking. Do it, well, you don't need to do it at Villa Park. Do it at, I don't know, any of the Midlands football grounds at yeah. all. Do it at Walsall. Yeah. Not going to be too many people. Not going to be too many people. Be fine. Well, I think people... It's weird, isn't it? Like, as we all know, that first Wembley final, very bizarre. Um, obviously, when we played Coventry City, you're like, oh, this is a massive club from a massive place that have got loads of supporters. But if they're able to, let's just say, let's just say um, that the FA and the EFL have actually managed to be light on their feet and think quickly and think, hold on a minute, it's Cambridge, average attendance 4,000 against Exeter City, average attendance 5,000. Uh, we can fit this into a 15,000 seat stadium and still it would fit essentially what our home capacity would normally be for each team. Yeah. But they won't do that. And probably reduce capacity as well because of coronavirus. We, yeah. And, and, but no, of course they won't. Of course they won't. Anyway, that's that. So, so anyway, we don't got to worry about that just well, yet. No, we haven't. But what we're saying is, I, I, like you, I'd be surprised if we'd actually would parade up to Rodney. Yeah, I, I hope it does happen. I was looking forward to tonight's game. I mean, there's not much going on at the moment, and I'll be honest, it kind of um, it gets me through the week a bit yeah. watching um, football at home. Like, it's, it's better than if when it doesn't happen. I think, ugh. You know, like, oh, we'll wait till Saturday then. And I've got, you know, I do do other things. I've, you know, <laughs> I've got, I'm actually working a couple of days. I mean, I, you know, the, you can watch films. I watched that film Greenland last night, that new one, about the end of the world. I thought it was about Plymouth Argyle. It's rubbish. Don't bother. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, nah, it'd be good. To, uh, hopefully, I hope it is on. Especially those midweek ones, you know. So that's that coming up. Um, apart from that, there's a few other bits and pieces going on in there. Yeah, a couple, a couple of bits of news, isn't there, I suppose? Well, 
Uh, you might have noticed today in the news, listeners, that um, the PFA took the EFL to court over this salary cap. Yeah, that came in at the beginning of the season, didn't it? Or just, just before? Just before. About a year ago. Yeah, that's right. And um, League Two teams, their salary was capped at 1.5 million for the year. Then there was also the extra problem of some teams already had a higher salary than that, so it was a tapered approach. So at some point in the future, I think three years, maybe two, you'd get to that point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Salford City paying three million out, they'd have to, over the few seasons, get down to 1.5. That's the way you'd have to do it. For any kind of salary cap, that's how it would have to work, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then uh, League You can't one, make people just shed players now. No, no. <laughs> and then League One had a 2.5 million yeah, salary yeah. cap. And that's I think gone that, as well, is it? It's all gone. Right. So uh, the PFA challenged it and they've won. So the current, I mean, it's only just happened today, but I believe the current suggestion is they'll return back to what it was originally, which is that your income uh, sorry your outcome has to reflect in some way your income but your income can mean many different things so i mean yeah anyone who's ever done a tax return can tell you that can't they uh having never done a tax return i couldn't tell you but um yeah you uh you know obviously normally income for a business would be tickets sold pasties sold uh outgoings brian bowman's hair dye and so on and so forth yeah and then what you're left with that's what you you know yeah but but the way it works, obviously, just like stick a load of stuff in the misc column, yep. and um, no one bats an eyelid. Now, I don't know what to do. About, I don't know what the right thing to do about it, all this. Is like, I mean, uh, on the one hand, you think salary cap seems sensible, um, but I don't know. Is it the kind of wrong answer to the the right problem? Do you know what I mean? I don't. I mean, I, there's a bigger question, I suppose, isn't there? Well, there's many bigger questions. Because what that happens is that you you get, you get situations like Barry, don't you, and, and clubs going out of business and losing, and, and like that's nearly happened to a bunch of other clubs and will happen to others. That and then like these, you know, it's, and it's not fair on the supporters who basically have no say in any of these goings on, no. these business decisions, and you know, at all. And yet they're the ones. This is all. In, it's all for. And then all these Berry supporters, they're just like, oh, thanks very much. Yeah. It's like, well, I've, my generations of my family supported this football team. And now because someone wanted to make a bit of cash, essentially. The, I mean, sell the car park, I believe, yeah. It's gone. Yep. Yep. So that's obviously something that needs to be protected from. And I, and I think there's a few problems, aren't there? Like, problem number one is not very fair. But then, I guess, sport kind of inherently isn't fair. Like, on one hand, Salford City... People have invested a lot of money in them. On the other hand, Salford's a much is a bigger part of a much bigger city than Exeter, so it's always going to be kind of in their favour. So on that hand, you're like, well, maybe that's kind of fair. But the, I think the real problem is exactly like you said, dodgy owners or owners who just get bored or even die, yeah. and someone else inherits the club and then does, you yeah, know, just abandons it. Now, if the whatever. EFL had better. You know, if they were kind of a better scrutiny over owners, um, kind of a bit more, you know, checking on the accounting, like more transparency, um, actually putting an effort and like, you know, not, I'm not suggesting they're taking backhanders or anything, but just like, you know, making sure that everything's above board and just checking people at least before they come and take over football clubs and go like, look, what are you doing here? You use a responsibility to the people that support this football club and the people, you know, the, the history of it and the town that, um, itself, that you don't run this into the ground. Yeah. And it, the EFL do have, do have to take some responsibility there because who else is going to do it? You can't trust the owners. So, I don't know, all this, we talked about before, maybe there being a kind of template for support or trust to be able to step in if things go wrong. You know, like, like I mean, I, I don't know. We we didn't do anything about that personally, but Exeter City have a, a, a worked out a good model, and maybe that could be used, and and other teams have done it too. Like to that that could happen, but I don't know. On the other hand, you kind of say, yeah, you know, well, you can't stop. I, I think you're right. I think that investing in businesses, you know, club like, owners have to be curators rather than um, well, they, they have to be less Donald Trump and more the Queen, don't they? Um, in like the Queen comes into the role knowing what her responsibility is she lives with it it's sometimes good for her and it's sometimes less good for her she can't change that much about it and then she goes but you've got a lot of cash i mean that's that's kind of a separate issue isn't it whereas uh trump's like 
oh, I just come in and I do what I want and I don't care what's left at the end of it. And at the minute, everything looks really good for the Premier League clubs. And, and obviously, they're at the moment, talking about this European Super League or whatever, and they're like laughing at how it's easy for them. And, you know, they're just being held back by all these clubs who want there to be some transparency and, and that kind of stuff. That's all well and good until that owner goes bust or that owner gets bored or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, of course. Well, there's a certain degree. I'm like, you can't expect any help. In the same way of all this stuff of like, the, like especially even the fans. I don't know it's like a lot of teams, fans of bigger teams aren't like this at all. But there's a certain thing of like that. This, this view that like, oh, you all, you'd all do it if you were in our position. It's just because you haven't got the money. You would you'd be here too. You'd be thinking the same. It's like what well, they don't maybe under, like wouldn't even think for a minute that actually no, there's plenty of people who don't who really don't want that to happen to their football team I don't want it to I've said it many times on this I'd hate it mm. you know and so it's not I don't know they need to look past maybe the idea that everyone in involved in football all the supporters all the clubs and everything are all striving towards being owned by a Saudi Arabian billionaire do you mean because they're not I'm not having to go to anyone personally I just mean I just, just mean having a load of money and being rich and that that sort of thing you know like it isn't it's not what it's about yeah that's I don't right. know and you know like the talk of that you know oh you just want to be we just want the best you know we want all the trophies it's really hard to win trophies right so loads and loads and loads of football clubs have been invested. there's hardly any of them there's hardly any of them compared to how many teams there are and the loads and loads of football clubs go after that dream and fall not just short but so far short and Barry is the prime example like yeah they got promotion is that two years ago two yeah. years ago with Ryan Lowe now look at them now yeah. literally seconds later yeah. nothing yeah, now, yeah. I don't know if they were on course with the Premier League or what but you know that guy was speculating to accumulate and it fell short and it's the same with many many other clubs and you can just imagine in 10 years time when English football isn't that popular anymore because something else has overtaken it. Yeah. You know, I, and because it's not actually how much people in England like it. We've always liked it the same. It's how much other people like it, isn't it, that makes it rich. Of um, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when some other thing catches on, some, you know, some other league's more exciting or whatever. Yeah, well, I imagine, I imagine Italy in the 90s weren't thinking, oh, no, we'll always be the best. Everyone's always going to, you know, it, yeah. it does move around, yeah, you know, like. Absolutely. So... Uh, it's, a, it's a salient lesson, really, isn't it? But yes, something will need to be done to avoid um, these clubs just going absolutely into the doldrums. Yeah. You know, and, and so salary cap's part of that conversation, but it's definitely not the whole part of it, is it? Um, Berry obviously got caught out by their salaries, but they also got caught out by the fact that their owner at the time flogged everything. Yeah, and you shouldn't have to be like, it shouldn't be like, no, you can keep your, you know lunatic kind of like owners still don't worry about that but we put a salary cap in sort out the yeah. root of the problem you know yeah yeah yeah. because when you owners... see a daffodil in your garden you don't just pull it out and chuck it in the bin you know you got to put that stuff on it that goes down and kill the root do you mean a daffodil or a dandelion i mean dandelion <laughs> you want to leave the daffodils yes because they're um a lovely sign of spring um anyway you can tune in next week to our gardening podcast Oh, I'd love to do that. Would you? I don't know anything about gardening, but I like digging them up. Okay. Well, tune in. Um, so The big garden theory. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I look forward to it. Um, so, yeah. It could right. also be called the big bank theory if it's just about gardens that are sort of on a hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If you've got a, a, all specific I to I mean, do you remember the primroses gardening. at the cow shed? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 You used to get daffodils along there, so didn't you? Am I imagining uh, well, it? Definitely, definitely some in. Um, but yeah, you're right. Obviously, a good owner will produce their own salary cap. You know, like they'll think, well, this is how much money we've got. Therefore, yeah, this is how exactly. much money we can spend. Yeah, well, I mean... That's we what we do. We can't have Jaden Stockley because we couldn't afford him. Yeah, we could have broken the bank and got him. And, you know, he's not going to... We don't get any more than three points for beating Bradford, do we? Stockley could have come and got five. Anyway, exactly. that's by the by. Um, well, Dan, that is a hot topic for... Well, the future. We'll see what the EFL comes up with. Uh, don't hold your breath, listeners. We'll see what happens. If you've got any thoughts, anything you'd like to get in touch with us about, you always can on Twitter at Big Bank Pod, on email with bigbankpod at gmail.com, and we're on Facebook as well. Send us a message. Yeah. Tell us how you are. Oh, uh, if you were interested earlier on, I mentioned about Matt Gray having a uh, grey house. Matt um, Jay having a grey house. He's, if you, on Matt, 
he's got his Instagram an Instagram account for his house. Uh, you can find it if you that, just if, to, just to if you've got the know how. I'm not going to I'm not going to point you exactly how to get to it, but if you if you're you know savvy enough with tech, you can find Matt Gray's no Matt Jay's Gray House. So no, just, just to reiterate, a- listeners, Matt Jay has got an Instagram page for his house that's grey. Well, right, um, the house isn't grey, but everything in the house is grey. Like, yeah. This might sound like I'm exaggerating. I'm not. No. Everything in the house I mean, is grey. I didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing. So it turns out it's a thing to have a grey house. Like, everything you own is grey. Yeah. Um, and Matt J subscribes, or at least, you know, someone he lives with subscribes to that. And it, I just found it very, quite strange. I mean, it's more than strange. <laughs> strange on many levels. Alex Ferguson. You can great. do what you want with your house. But, I mean, you know. Alex Ferguson wouldn't live there. He'd walk into the walls. What I wonder is if you see something in, say, I don't know, some shop. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that looks nice. I'd be, I'd be looking for, we need one of those for the living room, you know, like something like, like oh, we can't get it. Mm. It's, uh, have you got this in grey? No, they can't get it then. You know, you're so limited. Do you think they take like a palette with them of acceptable greys? You just, well, I suppose you said grey. Any greys, any greys fine. Do you think Matt J's girlfriend will dump him when she meets someone called uh, Graham? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, uh, the reason I was getting confused earlier is because I went to, went to school with someone called Matt Gray. Oh, yeah, that's confusing. But yeah, um, um, but yeah grey, look him up. Uh, maybe you can just, if you can't find Matt jay's gray house just look up other people's gray house, at them. least you know what we're on about um i guess that's some sort of like gray pride isn't it <laughs> anyway um it's weird it's certainly weird what look sort of up. dogs he got hey what sort of dogs he got <laughs> uh, wolfhound <laughs> um i don't know Lovely i found it weird maybe it's not weird at all maybe i'm weird for having different colored stuff in my house i don't know maybe it's a bit 1984 isn't it you know Maybe the government's doing it. Oh, you're suggesting that someone's forcing him to have a grey house. Or may- maybe he doesn't know that, but the government's doing it via right, yeah. medium of Instagram, you know. Well, just to dull everybody's expectations for life. Yeah. <laughs> Removal of colour from, <laughs> from the home. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, on that note... Yeah, maybe. A grey in the past had always been a kind of like, you know... The connotations for grey would be kind of, you know, dull, boring unexciting you know and not the sort of thing you'd necessarily want you know to douse your house in but times have changed apparently so yeah not for me though i'm sticking with my I've, i don't i'm trying to think i've got anything gray i do have actually i've got a gray blanket which i got from when the phoenix do uh the art center do uh cinema big screen in the park yeah they provide blankets for you in the out there and i just i have one are you not supposed to leave them behind? I, I thought they were free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, if you saw someone running out of Northern A Park wearing a <laughs> blanket like the Emperor from Star Wars. Other than that, I ain't got anything grey, I don't think. Well, you can't go around his house then. I, I tried to get some grey stuff. It's all sold out. <laughs> you know where to go looking. Anyway, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, my name's John. I've been here with my friend and colleague Dan. Thanks. See you soon. Cheers. Great.